SSELL. It's 5.30. I'll call our city council meeting to order. Capital we have C one council member to sit down here in the city minute. hall, capital C, capital H. One, two, three, exclamation point. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with that. All right, we're going to I call ourselves to order. I'm going to have, ask Councilman Ricky Thurman if he would lead us in the pledge. The pledge is. That's good. Yeah, that's not over. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you very much. As typical for our regular council meetings once a month, we ask the, someone from the Ministerial Alliance to come and uh, leave us an invitation. Tonight's Ed Didford. And appreciate your coming tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Council, thank you, staff, thank you. Uh, the passing of Mr. Gilbert, I can't help but think about names like that. Mr. Gandy, Mr. Pollan from back in the day, um, Dr. Thompson, Mr. Henderson, and in my estimation, those of you council members, you're following in their footsteps. You're serving. Thank you for, for serving. Thank you for uh, uh, making our community better, making a place where we can draw leaders like Chief Harris that will soon be here two years and uh, fix and recognize a, a team and draw on leaders like Coach Doty. So we appreciate all your efforts. Would you pray with me? Father, I ask you to bless the efforts of this council. I ask you to bless their investment of time. Uh, add back to their lives and their families and their sacrifice. We ask you to give them uh, great relationships that are mutually uh, blessing with the county and the district and the university and all these roles that have to intertwine. We just pray for your favor and wisdom in that area. I ask that you bless them, you keep them, you make your face to shine upon them, that you be gracious to them, that you lift your countenance upon them, and that you give them peace. I ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ed. Council, you have in front of you, uh, we have a presentation tonight, but I'll, since it's a resolution, I'm going to ask for a motion, a second, and a vote on adopting resolution number 2022-R01, which is what y'all signed a little bit earlier. Have a motion? I make a motion, Mayor. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. It's time to do, this is one of the cool parts. I didn't bring my cane. Be a bunch of blonde lady boys. I've made a lot of proclamations and resolutions to a group of body of people. Uh, there's a lot of weight in here today, a lot of big guys. I was hoping to stand back there so I could be taller than most of y'all, but I can't. Um, so most of us here remember Sterling when he was about how big? Uh, yeah, something like that. And we saw him do some great things on the football field and other in, in life in general. And his mom and daddy did a great job of raising him. So we appreciate Sterling. 
what you've done for the city of Stephenville, for these boys, and for Stephenville High School, Stephenville Independent School District. I have a resolution 22, 2022 R01. I want to read it to you guys. I'm not going to name all, write all your names off. You know, everybody here knows who you are, but I want to read the resolution. Whereas the Stephenville High School football team, with a season record of 16 and 0, won the Class 4A Division I state title on December 17, 2021, earning Stephenville High School its sixth state title. And whereas this great accomplishment required determination, sacrifice, skill, dedication from the players, coaches, and athletic trainers, as well as support from their classmates and community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the efforts of the and achievements of the Steamville High School football team are hereby recognized and applauded, and we, the undersigned, which is all the city council, on behalf of all the citizens of Steamville, Texas, wish to congratulate them for their hard work, positive representation of the city of Steamville, on and off the field. And, Coach, thank you very much for what you did. Gentlemen, congratulations. <laughs> My guess is most of y'all were probably a little bitty the last time this happened in Steamville, Texas. And if you're even around, maybe, I don't know, maybe not. But y'all did a great job. Thank you for representing Steamville, Texas. I was in Colorado about three weeks ago. And I was sitting in a restaurant hey, drinking some coffee. And a gentleman came in. He just sat down and said, where are you from? I said, Steamville, Texas. He said, y'all just won state championship. This is in Colorado. And so it, it's not something just recognized here. It's something recognized all over Texas and even in the United States. Y'all did a great job. And we appreciate what you did in the city of Steamville. You want to come say something to your yes, sir. Yeah, I love community? I'll talk about these, this group of men any, any chance I get. Uh, just a phenomenal group of young men. We knew they were going to be special all the way back uh, when we started off season last year and ever since. Um, our staff got here in Stephenville. Um, just great kids, work extremely hard. Uh, we love every one of them. They love each other. Um, it, it was a lot of talking about me, but we have a phenomenal staff of men um, that, that love these guys, that, that coach them hard and love them even harder and develop relationships, relationships with them that are going to last a lifetime. And uh, this group set out uh, to, to be district champions and we checked that box, and, and now we're state champions, and we checked that box. So thank you so much to the city of Stephenville, to the city of champions. Uh, we, we've got 11 uh, now high school championships here in the city. Uh, just uh, we've got great things going on at Stephenville ISD. It's a great day to be a Yellow Jacket and a Honey Bee, and we're so proud of these guys. And I know they're going to continue to win the day um, the, the rest of their life. They're going to be great husbands. They're going to be great fathers, and they're going to be great community members uh, here in the city of Stephenville and all the way out in the world. So with that, uh, thank you guys so much. And Ruse on three. One, two, three. Ruse. Congratulations, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> no? Maybe that He's got a swing on. Yeah. He's probably doing left hand. It's kind of a trap. They're on the verge of firing all the I hate to go somewhere where you can sign with somebody in the place. Congrats. Both transfer points. It's that a different angle of At least once. Yeah. Second one. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Well, exciting time. <laughs> That's always fun. Next item on our agenda is citizens' general discussion. <coughs> it's an opportunity for citizens just to come up and address city council. If you got it, you I have some people's names up here, but they have particular issues they will raise. This general discussion. No nope, items five and six. So anybody else want to say something in general to see the city <coughs> Hearing none, we'll go on to the regular agenda item. And first thing is, I guess it's Steve. Or are you going to do it, Alan? Annexation. Oh, 
I am. I'm sorry, okay. Mayor. Steve looked at me like this look on his face like, oh my gosh, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we were approached uh, several weeks ago by the developer of the new uh, tractor supply out on 281 requesting to be annexed into the city limits. We have received his, his uh, request for voluntary annexation. We have uh, worked out and agreed to a service plan, which is required by state law. It's coming to you tonight for consideration for to, to bring it into the city limits. Uh, we are asking that, when, and it is within the ordinance, but, but when we bring it in, we bring it in as an industrial zoning. That is what the future land use calls for. The uh, proposed use of the property uh, is consistent with that zone. The staff respectfully recommends that you approve. You want to tell everybody where it is? It's at the intersection. Well, I guess it's really not an intersection. It's where Highway <coughs> 8 uh, runs into 281 next to uh, Rocky Creek Builder. Uh, if you go out there now, you'll see the pad being developed, and uh, they are working on it. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Any questions for Alan? Mr. Barnes, the normal procedure is for the annex property to have the services extended to that. That's a part of this uh, package, if it's my understanding. We have water available in that area. Wastewater is not available yet, but will be soon, we hope. Is that correct? That is correct. We have agreed to a, we we have agreed to a waiver um, for the wastewater uh, and allow them to have a a um, septic system. Sorry, I'm getting feedback in my new hearing devices. <laughs> and the the water service has been extended or or will be extended to the far side of their property. Correct. Uh, that is correct, and I believe it has been installed. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? Or oh, I have to have a public hearing, excuse me. It's, we're going to enter in a public hearing. Would anybody like to come speak in favor or in opposition to the proposal? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. Do I hear a motion? Mayor, I make a motion to approve Ordinance 2022-01. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. <coughs> Next item, consider approval of an ordinance. Well, that's that what we just did. Okay, the new senior citizen center. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we have gone out for bid uh, with a request for proposals for uh, the construction of a waste uh, of a uh, senior center uh, let me get the response uh, um, the base bid was a million I believe eighty thousand uh, dollars there was a secondary bid uh, I mean a, a, a bit an ad alternate for the addition of approximately another thousand square feet for the use of our, as a city council chambers. Uh, that uh, option is $180,000. After reviewing the, the uh, response to the request for proposal, uh, staff respectfully recommends the approval of or the acceptance of the bid. Uh, the uh, option two, the, the add all of the city council chambers and authorize staff to begin negotiation for a contract for that building. Questions? Well, <laughs> the, the proposal is made site specific, Mr. Barnes? That is correct. Is it possible to approve <coughs> the construction and determine the feasibility of that site versus another at a future time? Uh, it would be very unusual to do so. Well, the, the reason I'm asking, <laughs> we own a block in downtown, 
and the the facility if, if my measurements and my measurements are not always right because I'm not a surveyor but it could be constructed on the back side of that lot and then the front part which contains the existing building could be leveled for parking or whatever else we chose to do with it it would provide the new facility and still keep it in the downtown area which is a concern for some Mr. Attorney, would we have to yes, rebid this? Yes. Uh, if it's site specific. Yes. Uh, the site has been laid out, uh, and and uh, so we would have to rebid this. So it is site specific. That was my question. <laughs> I believe so. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? The city council chambers. Yes, sir. Just discussion for reasoning for it because we've had this and it hadn't been an open. The reasoning for that is that would allow us, correct me if I'm wrong, that would allow us to then utilize this for office space for growing staff and positions that have happened while giving a big conference room area that could be utilized by the seniors. Am I correct? 90% of the time. 90% yes, of the time and the two times a month that we utilize this or multiple during budgets could be utilized as a as the council chambers. That is correct. I, that's yes, sir. correct. So that's the way it's been designed. Okay. Anybody else? You, you have a question? Oh, need address. Okay. Here are no other questions, and we're going to enter in, into a public hearing on uh, the proposal request for proposal for the construction of the senior citizen center. And I have before me uh, Brenda Jan Smith. You'll come up and then you give us your name, your address, and tell us what you're, if you're for or against, and explain yourself. Okay. I'm glad to do that. Good evening. My name is Brenda Smith, but I go by Jan. Um, I live at 937 Metal Arc Lane here in Stephenville. I'm currently the chair of the Senior Advisory Board. And I come before you today, Honorable Councilman, to say we're really excited and thrilled that y'all have taken the initiative to build a new Senior Citizen Center. Um, and I just want to share a short story. Today I had my heating and air conditioning serviced. And the gentleman that came in said he services primarily elderly <laughs> folks. And he was sharing, I was sharing with him, he's from Granbury. So he was sharing from me what he likes about Granbury that Stephenville doesn't have. We all have those stories. I came from Austin. There's a big, big difference in Austin and Stephenville, but I still love Stephenville. Anyway, um, he was talking about the downtown area, so I started bragging on what the city councilmen have done with the breaking of the road and what some of your future plans were. And then I went into the Senior Citizen Center that y'all have moved forward with, or are moving forward with. And um, he said one of the things that he hears from the seniors out there is that they don't go to the Senior Citizen Center here because it is in such poor, poor shape. So I just come before you saying, <coughs> so proud that we're hopefully getting a new Senior Citizen Center. So I'm in support of the work that you're doing. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody have any questions for Jan? Thank you for coming up and speaking to us tonight. You're welcome. Anybody else like to speak in for or against the proposal. Here now, I'll close the public hearing. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the proposal. Second. second. The motion is second. Proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Picture your senior citizen. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Do we have to make a motion specific to which version of that we're picking? Are we picking the whole thing? Do we have to make a vote? Yes, sir. 
we, we do need to know if you want the at all. So, yes. Yes. Okay, so we made a motion. Now we're going to have to, I guess we have to make another motion, override that motion. So which one are we going to pick the add on? At all? No, I think you made a motion to approve. And we approved, the voted on it. Itself, not counting the addition. Now make a motion. And okay, just make a motion. And and okay. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the addition. Second. Uh, motion is second. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign opposed. Motion passes. Thank you. Mr. Killen, how's deer hunting? It was good. I enjoyed it. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Just give you an idea how hard he works. How many times did I text you and call you while you're on vacation? <clears throat> well, it wasn't too many, sir. You can text me anytime. Or call me. I appreciate that. Uh, so, at the uh, advice and encouragement of some of my coworkers, I've made a resolution to be a little quicker at the podium <laughs> this year. Uh, so, I only have one case tonight. But uh, historically speaking, my resolutions don't really last too long, so next month may be completely different. Uh, this is case RZ 2021-019 and RP 2021-008. It's from Dr. Causey, and he is requesting to rezone a property at 940 Harbin Drive from R1 single family to R2.5 integrated housing. The commission convened on December 15th and by a vote of four to three recommended the city council deny the rezoning request. Um, the mayor used to, and council used to uh, remind you and, and to point this out to the audience, the ordinance does allow a simultaneous consideration of a rezone and a replat, which is what we're requesting tonight. And so if the rezone is approved, the replat can also be approved. The replat is in your packet and it does meet the requirements of the replat. Uh, if it is not approved, then it would, uh, the replat would subsequently also be denied. Um, in your packet also, we have the maps showing the current zoning, future zoning, and the water utilities and sewer utilities for the property. And at the public hearing at PNZ, there were eight people that spoke uh, in opposition of the request. And so I believe we have some of those folks here tonight that would also uh, like to speak on that uh, subject. And of course, we have uh, Dr. Causey here as well. Um, so again, the, the uh, recommendation from PNZ was for the group uh, recommending denial. With the recommending denial. Request. So we would uh, be identifying both what we vote on is simultaneously both of them or one at the re plat or, and then the rezoning? I, re uh, I believe if you vote to deny the rezone, then the re plat doesn't matter. Re -plat is our, our so we, we need to vote on the rezone first then? Yes, sir. Okay. Questions for Steve? Steve, if I'm looking at the zoning map correctly, the current and future land use surrounding this property on all sides is R1. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Uh, even across Harbin, it's still R1. That is, yes, sir, that is correct. And the future land use uh, continues that R1 zoning? Yes, sir, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Other questions? Hearing none, we'll enter into a public hearing, and we have several speak people who want to speak. I'm just going to call them off the top of the list. Darla? Oh, I'm here. Say your, give your full name and address. I'm Darla Fans, and I live at 960 Lydia. The replat of the two lots would be directly across the street from me. And uh, I'm worried about the changes in the neighborhood because I consider our neighborhood what we want every neighborhood in Stephenville to be. Most of our street is older people, younger than me, but older, <laughs> you know. And, but we have walkers, you know, our neighborhood is walkable, you know. It has no congestion. You can get down our street without taking turns, <laughs> you know. There's uh, all of the streets, I think, in, or a lot of the streets, I should not be inclusive, uh, in Stephenville are too narrow to really park on both sides <coughs> and still have traffic flow, uh, you know, especially the areas that are zoned multifamily. I'm really worried about how those, that area is going to develop, but that's for another day. Uh, you know, so I am against this. I mean, I'm for denial, I guess is the way to say it. 
But um, the basis of that, I had never been to a planning and zoning meeting. I'd never been involved in that. And so I had to do my homework. I'm a detailed person, so. And what I came up with, or what I, my assessment is, replanting this is directly opposite of the goals of rezoning. You know, I see two main goals for rezoning. One is, you know, the, the basic management principle of uniting or looking at units of units as a whole and managing units as a whole rather than manage things individually. You know, you've got a neighborhood that you're managing as R1. You're throwing in a 2.5. And as Alan says, there's nothing close to it that's 2.5. So you're going to be managing that completely separately. Uh, the other thing is the purpose of zoning is to create cohesive, you know, compatible neighborhoods. And, you know, the big issue for Stephenville to, to, to deal with is how we manage <coughs> students and permanent residents. I've got 12 grandchildren, all between the ages of 21 and 30, all have gone to college. We spent the last 10 years on college campuses and in college towns. And my concern is, you know, we're not doing as well as most college towns are in that integration. And it's hard. I worked at Tarleton. We had lots of student workers. I understand. Very, I lived and breathed managing students. You know, it's different. They're fun. I like students. But I would never tell you that managing a student or managing anything related to students is going to be the same as managing adults. You know, they just don't have the experience. You know that. Uh, so the other thing I looked at, someone told me that in the past, spot zoning had not been supported, you know, by the city council. And I will say, in looking at the zoning map, I could only see two areas that I would call spot zoning for multifamily use. And they're both over, oh, by the Bruner area. And the difference in those two is they're very close to, they're not adjacent, but they're very close to a multifamily, a 2.5 area. You know, close enough that my question was why they didn't extend that area rather than do that spot zoning. You know, this section is not close to anything else that's 2.5. So my basic concern is you're making a mess, you know, instead of fixing something. The last thing I'd ask for is as you vote, I'd like to hear your reasons if you're voting yes. Because, not that I want to put you on the spot, but I don't understand the rationale. And I don't think anybody in my neighborhood understands why you would consider that. You know, so any information you can give us would be appreciated. Fair Thank you, enough? Thank you, ma'am. Any questions for, for Darla? Thank you, ma'am. Also, Bill Levert, Leverton, state your name and address. Good evening. Now, by the way, I just want to say about three minutes. Oh, good. Thanks. My name is Bill Leverton. I live at uh, 950 uh, North Harbin Drive. I think number one is my main reason for not wanting Dr. Quasi to uh, get to split his property in half is I think both of us should have to mow an acre and a quarter for the rest of our lives for penance for living. <laughs> <laughs> my main reason. So <laughs> he shouldn't get out of that just because of this. <clears throat> I would like to say to you, though, however, that the historical conformity of the neighborhood, I think, is important thing to think about. And I do oppose his idea respectfully, and that is, again, the historical conformity of the neighborhood has been R1. So when you purchase into a neighborhood, you have an expectation of it to look a certain way, a feel a certain way, and be a certain way. 
So at some point in time, if you change that in the midstream of it, even though this is an, uh, an older neighborhood or a neighborhood that's well established, then ideally you're going to change the identity of that through this spot zoning. I'm not necessarily against or for spot zoning, but I think in an established neighborhood that has historical conformity to a certain way, then ideally you're changing that completely. And the complexity of that has, in my opinion, no doubt but to deplete the value of the property, even if it's a perceived value, because I no longer want to buy into a property that has a certain look, feel, and look to it, as opposed to the way it had before, if that makes sense. And the next thing is, I, I think that, I think when you look at the, the best use and historical best use of a piece of property, I think it's our idea to lift that up and to continue the trajectory of something to go with best use. And I feel like this is uh, not a best use. It would be a substandard <coughs> use of it. And I feel that, that, um, that by, well, I hate to say this, but by, by reducing that standard of it, then at then that point you're inviting uh, another depletion of property value, at least a stagnation. <clears throat> I think then, lastly, I think the thing you have to look at is opening something of a Pandora's box because there are three other pieces of property that are vacant <laughs> on that block currently that would be susceptible to that R2.5. Now, keep in mind that that would add somewhere between a minimum of 19 cars and a maximum of 36 cars on that square block. And there's no way that that... that the city planners could have planned for that amount of volume on that road, whether it be parking or travel, whatever. Other than that, um, that's all I have to say. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Okay, what did I just do? Here we go. Kenneth, just state your name and address. My name is Kenneth Carlton, and I'm at 920 North Lydia. Uh, across and one house over from the proposed uh, site for the rezoning. Uh, a lot of my concerns <coughs> have already been voiced, so I won't go back over from the traffic uh, problems and the, uh, the, the safety concern for the rezoning. Uh, Dr. Cousy has expressed he 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 think he doesn't want to cause the uh, neighborhood any harm. But the fact is, once he sells that land, that decision is out <coughs> of his hands. And if that land is sold, it will be more, more than likely sold to a developer. The developer more than likely will want to get the maximum money uh, income from that land. And the way to do that is put the maximum number of units of housing on that land. And so we're, we're down to the problems of traffic and, and safety and, and uh, that have already been mentioned. So uh, as a result of these issues, I respectfully request that the rezoning uh, initiative be declined. Any questions for Kenneth? Thanks, sir. We have another. Scott? Or Millie? Oh, Mike! I was writing yeah. that in a hurry. He sure did. <laughs> My goodness. It was like M C U. Thank you, I'm Mike Scott. I uh, live at eleven thirty one North Lydia. I'm I'm the next block uh to the north uh of of this area. First thing I want to do is I wanna thank each and every one of you who are sitting up there because you guys have a hard job and I greatly appreciate your time and your effort to try to make Stephenville the best that it can be. I have a history in public education. I've sat through hundreds of meetings like this <laughs> and, and I understand what you're going through. And, but from, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your service. Um, as Mr. Carlton said, um, it's pretty well all been said, but what I would like to do is I would like to represent the Planning and Zoning Commission. <clears throat> I'm not a part of that, but for many years, I served the city as the director of the Parks and Recreation uh, Committee, Advisory Committee. and. <clears throat> I understand the work that goes into to those committees 
and that you guys lean on those committees for the work that they put in and you you hope that they are going to come back to you and they're going to give you the best advice possible and so I'm going to say at this point in time that I'm going to charge you to follow their lead don't negate the work that they have done the final thing that I'll say is the corner down there at Fry and Lydia can be very treacherous <coughs> right now trying to cross fry trying to turn on to on to fry whatever you're trying to do there it can be very treacherous with cars parked in front of houses there you know it's in and out if we add more to that by by multifamily dwellings which would would mean multiple more vehicles i think that uh, you're just asking for more trouble so once again, thank you guys for what you do. Thank you for your consideration. <clears throat> Questions for Mike? Thanks, sir. Appreciate you coming. We have one other person who's requested, Debbie Doris. Yes. If you'll state your name before you leave, I'd like for you to get <coughs> Stacy and fill one of these out so we can have record your state your name and address and uh, make your comments. My name is Debbie Doris. I live at 1111 Lydia. I am a foreigner. I don't live across the street. I don't live next door. Um, what has been said so far, I definitely agree with. I'm opposed to this move, but not because of what you think. I um, think, number one, that citizens deserve the security of zoning regulations when they invest in a property. Now, from Henderson to Chamberlain, that area in there, that's all R1. Those are single family homes. And a little bit of my background, obviously I grew up here. I was gone for 38 years and then I came back. And I have been, questioning some of the things that our planning and zoning board have proposed and have done. Uh, not all bad, but I also think there, if you don't pay attention to what you're doing, there can be, in this specific case, a recklessness where you do open a window to change a neighborhood. and. That's not what you want. I was a commercial designer for 30 <coughs> years, well, semi-retired. And I did a lot of huge projects. And I was active in urban planning. And <coughs> with that experience, I have seen, uh, there's a lot of talk of mixed zoning, mixed uses, changing the look of the neighborhoods and everything. But I'm gonna tell you, this is not a new phenomenon. It's been around for 30 or 40 years. It's just now migrating to us. The distinction that you as the chamber members need to make in your decision making is, mixed use does not mean plopping in something completely different from what the rest of the neighborhood is. What it means is, as your town grows, as things change, you provide areas designated that are constructive to help support those areas. Mixed use, whether it be a corner grocery store, the doctor's office, whatever the logistics are, um, so I, I don't want you to get this instance confused and say, oh yeah, we need to go this direction because that's not right. 
and there have been studies after studies <coughs> after studies made that say mixed use zoning, if not properly planned and developed, are disastrous. Um, so, in that, um, I think it's, you know, it's hard for us. I'm the foreigner down the block from this area, but uh, I think, you know, when somebody invests in a home and when they purchase that property and it is zoned R1, they expect those mortgage payments to uphold that R1 zoning whether they're new families, retired people, educators from Tarleton, you know, whoever. Um, those are just really important factors. And um, I think if, if you look through my eyes, I can see this area years down the road being a neighborhood that will completely change its complexion. I think someday this will be a neighborhood where young starter families will grow because where they were raised, parents have passed away, the homes either are sold or inherited or whatever, but it's a perfect area because of the composition, the schools, downtown, business, healthcare providers. We want to keep that zone intact. We don't want to destroy it right now. Now, 30 years from now, may be a completely different story. But today, that's not where we're at. And I have not seen any massive studies or investigation on why you would want to change the complexion of this neighborhood. So, I hope that uh, Y'all will comply. I took this off of the website because I only heard about this yesterday. Um, the planning and building department's goal is to make Stephenville safe, reliable, and attractive. When you put a different facade next to a home, you're changing the attractiveness, the cohesiveness. Um, <coughs> But it, they're supposed to provide safe, livable, and, attract, and uh, attractive by promoting orderly growth and development. So that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see a master plan. And I think that's where this could be accomplished. I assure you, I'm not opposed to townhouses. I have seen very successful neighborhoods. Uh, in the Metroplex that have incorporated them. We need them, we need them bad in this town. We do need a mix, but we're also very lacking in single family homes at the moment. And so when you start disrupting a pretty solid neighborhood, then you're disrupting that when your need is greater for other things. So. Thank you, ma'am. That's what I have to say. Don't forget to fill out your form over here, yes. if you don't mind. Anybody, anybody have any questions for Debbie? I would like to make a comment. Can All right. I do that? Not right, right now, ma'am. She'll have a form for it. Well, you, you've already had your three minutes. Woman, you want to say something? I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to address you and I also value your time. I'm a member of the Board of Adjustment. I have been for over a decade and I'm currently the chair. There's a good chance I would have just gone ahead and create, um, tried to replan and resurvey at R1. Um, <clears throat> but I'm also the chair of the Board of Adjustment that would hear the variance that would allow that nine or 10 foot variance on the, on the property if I were to have re tried to rezone it, it according to that. Um, I've heard um, in, the re in the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, people say if it was R1, I would have been okay with it. I would have been okay with R1.5 if, if that's what you had proposed. But the reality is, is I went before um, the city to Steve Killen and said, this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to 
to chop the, the property that I own right now with my wife, PJ, also known as Birdie to a lot of you. And uh, um, I'd like to, to stop having to mow that one part of our yard. I'd like to make some good use of it. And if you could ever just see that, that, that property, it's tremendous. <coughs> it's got a long um, uh, width to it and it's got some depth to this kind of wonky property that we own where the house is right smack dab in the center between Harbin and Lydia. And so <clears throat> the way that, that uh, we talked about it and then I got a, a surveyor to look at it, um, there would still be from Harbin back to the house and then beyond that, of course, the backyard, would still have that integrity of what this house looked like for the last 100 years. Um, well, not, not 100 since 1961, I should say. Um, but it is an old neighborhood, and those three houses there, the corner house where there's the buffalo in front, uh, my house, and then the house that now um, the Levertons are in, that's a very strange but un, you know really special little uh, section um, there. But it has been altered in the last few years, and so you've seen that house on the corner of Fry and Lydia. You've seen the house behind the buffalo house. Um, get kind of resegmented. So all I'm doing is saying, I'd like to make some use of this land that, that's at the moment not going to use at all. And, um, and so I have a few things to say about that. It's a tremendous piece of property. We've owned it for about five years and um, I'd like to just make some use of that property. Two, I'd like to, to say we, none of us like taxes, none of us like death, none of us like change. But change is coming. And I've heard some key words like master plan, foreigner, complexion, facade. It's, that just <coughs> rubs me a little bit the wrong way. Things are going to change. And, uh, and uh, it's not like Pandora's box is going to open to this kind of slippery slope um, uh, problem of, of these straw man arguments that are being made that somehow by opening it to 2.5, it's going to just alter everything and make everything go, go downhill. The thing about it is 2.5 wasn't even created until September 2021. That's not even four months ago, right? So to act like there's some comprehensive plan that 2.5 doesn't fit into is disingenuous. It's not even, it's just, it's not, it's not relevant because 2.5 didn't exist. It was created for this kind of development so that there could be opportunities not just for, it could be single family home, but it could be a condo or it could be a duplex. Third, um, we've got to proceed with some growth. When people talk about property values going down across the board, my tax rates and all the tax rate homework that I've done doesn't bear that out. The tax rates are going up because our property values are all going up. So you can't predict what hasn't been the case. Four, I'd like all, I like all of Lydia and all of Harbin, but, but when you cross Fry and there's like lovely families that direction and you go towards the loop, there are lovely families down that direction. But there's this kind of mentality that there's this special 500 yards that just is sacrosanct and should never be touched. And that's the way it's been for 70 years. And I just would beg that we can change that mentality. One of, one of five, my neighbor recently put in a driveway Change is coming. He knows it. He's preparing. So why can't I? I'd like to make change happen in my backyard as well. Um, oftentimes, six, we're all, um, you know, united in, in some of those, those things that we don't like. But one thing we all definitely like is freedom. And I'm just <coughs> asking that we can make use of my property in such a way that is valuable to the community. I'm not just reaching out to kids who are at college who are going to try to trash a rent house, that can happen anywhere. That can happen with an R1. That can happen with an R1.5. Instead, if it's done well, the 2.5 can be a valuable piece of property for me or a developer to change that um, into single family. But it doesn't, it, just because someone can come in and make it into a duplex um, doesn't mean that it's going to be a bad thing. And then finally, I'd like to just say that um, uh, the uh, it, I will have to come back. It's so expensive to make these kinds of 
changes to ask for these kinds of changes. Just asking costs about a thousand bucks. And um, and so if you're if you if you make me come back and ask for it to be 1.5, that could be three pieces of property right there replatted. Um, at R1, it would be one property. Um, but I'm asking that you to, that you uh, grant this request this time. And then finally, uh, the last time I went when I did come before the PMZ, which I do honor their their um, their work and their expertise, um, it was a four to three decision. So in spite of the fact that there was a, um, a few more people more vocal than the lone voices and PJ and me, um, it still almost passed. And a 4-3 vote um, was said, it was said, let's give it to the city council to make a decision. And um, I, I want you to know that I am not um, trying to disrupt anything. I just want to make use of my land. And, um, and I think you all can respect and understand that. Um, finally, I'd just simply like to say Matthew 22, 36 to 40 says, what's the greatest commandment? It's to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, but also your neighbor as yourself. I have never been anything but loving to my neighbors. And um, if anything, I've seen some kind of uh, unfriendly, unloving <laughs> uh, energy in my direction. But this is coming out of, out of no desire to hurt my neighborhood, but to only um, uh, make use of the land and try to make some changes. We did this 2.5 in the city not to uh, make things worse, but to be able to make use of places like this in the community. And that's, that's what we have. Thank you, sir. Anybody Thank question you. for a moment? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank Anybody you else want to speak in favor or in opposition to the request? Yes, sir. If you'll state your name, I'll need you to fill out a form at the end. Okay. State your name and address. You have three minutes. Okay. Uh, my name is Brent Billings. I live at 970 North Lydia Street, which is a household from where he's at. Uh, as last meeting, I stated I'm totally opposed to it. I'm not interested in additional cars on the road, additional smaller houses there. It's a good neighborhood the way it is. Uh, it's a little fast sometimes down the road, but uh, I'm totally opposed to it. And uh, it's not consistent with R1 zoning, and I can't imagine it being improved. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Thanks, sir. Anybody else want to speak in favor or opposition? Here now, I'll close the public hearing, and we'll look at a motion and motion. First will be to rezone. Mayor, will be denied the rezone as requested. Okay, Brady. Second. Further discussion? Mayor, the motion was to deny. Deny. Deny, okay. And, and, and Bertie and PJ, I'll just tell you guys real quick why. I mean, I know you want to hear why. And I agree the change is coming, and I think <coughs> nobody advocates for change more than I do probably, but I'm sorry just in this location where you guys are at, you own a beautiful property, it's a beautiful location, beautiful home you have, and I, I just can't, me personally, foresee putting anything else other than single-family housing there. That, I know it's your property, and I respect your property rights completely, but I just think that's an area of town that's got to stay single-family no matter what the conditions are, so that's my personal opinion. Yep. Yep. And I'll second. explain myself as probably one of the people that got 2.5 to even come into to existence. 2.5 was created to protect neighborhoods, um, <coughs> but in larger segments, in, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I can't see this changing to a 2.5. Um, and, and my reasoning being because uh, it's never spot zoning. I hear spot zoning. 2.5 is going to be spot zoning wherever it is because it is brand new to, to moment's point. Um, but one of the areas it's been used for was an area that was basically a whole block within the city uh, that was touched by R3 in a spot, in spots. Um, and um, this was a way to not have more apartment complexes, but to have townhomes that are very attractive. If you go right back over here and look in some of this area, they're great. Um, but it's an area, not a block, not a lot within other lots. So um, answer some of those questions that we had, because we, this is a new thing. It will be felt out in, in different areas. Um, uh, it, it will be, you know, as we move forward and make planning, um, it will be part of, of, of the use within the city. Um, but in my opinion, 
this is an R1 all the way around. There's no R3 uh, anywhere around it, and so uh, I won't be supporting it. So. Anybody else? I'll just, to add to them, the only other thing I would say about the 2.5 is I think it was kind of designed for areas that are in the midst of redevelopment right now. And, and that area is one that's just not, uh, that it's been single family. It's still single family, mostly uh, owner occupied in that area, um, larger homes uh, and larger lots. So the 2.5 would just, would greatly change that one little spot of that neighborhood. So that's why I can't support it. Anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. Mayor, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> to address you, Moomin, uh, I would not support the change in this either. And I, and I, and it's because it's a little early. Uh, Debbie mentioned 30 years from now, you know, it's likelihood that everything's going to change. Well, mm -hmm. it may be 15 years from now, maybe 10 from now, but right now it's single family from Fry Street North for sure. Most of them are owner occupied homes. South of Fry Street, there are a lot of rentals all the way down. That's a little bit different concept there. But north of Fry Street on Harbin, they're nearly all that. And they're all, and it's all zoned uh, correctly, R1. And, uh, and I agree with uh, uh, Brandon and uh, the other councilman here that, that 2.5, uh, why it was developed, why we ask planning and zoning to review it and then why this council approved it it's so that we could have uh, <coughs> a lower density rather than than uh, apartment complexes everywhere and in those particular areas and it was a protection type thing uh, this however it wasn't meant for single lots I don't believe and I think that's what we've what we're looking at at this in this particular instance so uh, I believe that uh, along with Brady and, and the, uh, here that the correct use of this property is, is R1 in maintaining that at the present time. Anybody else? Hearing none, I, hear, I have a motion and a second. Proceed to vote all in favor. Then the motion is to deny the request. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion, fa motion passes. Thank you, I'll sir. Remember that when I come back and ask for our <laughs> I'll remember that. There you go. All right, next item financial reports. <clears throat> Mayor, Council, this is the financial report for the period ending November 30th, 2021. We're two months into our fiscal year. A pretty decent start. Um, for property tax, we received 447,000 uh, in November, resulting in 243,000 or 36.98% increase of over funds collected last fiscal year to date. It's 13.27% of budget, which is about four and a half more than, than I anticipated. Uh, for our sales tax, we received 816000 in November, which is 188000 or 14.24% more than the funds collected last fiscal year to date. It's 20.63% of our $7.3 million budget, which is about 2.81% higher than we had anticipated. The target budget for operating revenue is $4.2 million. We received $5.3 million fiscal year to date, resulting in $1 million over our target budget due to property taxes, sales taxes, service charges, and other income. The target budget for operating expenditures is $4.2 million. We expended $3.4 million fiscal year to date, which is about $800,000 under our target budget. The operating revenue received last year was $4.2 million compared to the $5.3 million is $1.16 million increase, um, which is due to property taxes, sales taxes, our franchise taxes, um, hot funds, service charges, and other income. The operating expenditures last year were $3.7 million compared to the $3.4 currently 
which is a 340,000 decrease, of which about 260,000 relates to the repair of the public safety building building in the prior year that obviously didn't continue this year. On the budgetary comparison for expenses, is there just maybe some POs that hadn't come in yet? It, at the beginning of the year, we tend to get on to a slow start um, with some of our projects and things of that nature. And we have some, uh, some of our computer software maintenance agreements and things like that are on an annual basis, and they come a little bit later in the year. So. Okay. So you don't anticipate that to, to hold? Well, we, some of it will. Okay. Just, I mean, because we, we ended the year last year probably about a million dollars under budget. So, so a lot of this has to do with some of our vacancies. We've had several uh, key positions that have been vacant for the, the last two months that were already budgeted. So some of that has to do with some vacancies as well. And so that just, I mean, it just ends up being a true savings. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Jeff Sanford. See, who, who is a country western guy that you wear black all the time? Johnny Cash. <laughs> I thought you were going to bring your hat up. I could, but out of respect, I'll leave it all down. There's another good looking hat up here, though. Sir? There's another good looking hat up here. Don't mix them up. Oh, I know. It's always looking good. He does. He pulls it off better than I do. He does. Uh, happy New Year. <laughs> a lot of people pull off things better than I do. Uh, who remembers what was going on in 1863? Yeah, two years old, so you'll remember. <laughs> well, just so you remember, uh, and you probably would remember, um, <laughs> on 1863. 18, yeah, maybe a different Kennedy, but who knows? You know. uh, and it, uh, it was on this day in 1863 that the four-wheeled roller skate was patented by James Plimpton of New York. I thought, Mayor, since you're a big roller skater, I thought that would be something you'd be <laughs> appreciative of. This was on my right knee. Uh, exactly, yeah. And, and also on this day in 1954, Elvis recorded his first demo for Sun Records. You may not know what it was. It was, It Wouldn't Be the Same Without You, was the song. And I say that only because this last year, it wouldn't have been the same without you guys and the work that you did. I just want to say thank you on behalf of the citizens of this great community for the work that you've done to help progress this community in great ways. The numbers are showing it almost every time. I like to follow Monica and hear all the great things because virtually every month for the last several months, uh, you get to hear the increased sales tax, the increase other uh, forms of revenue that are coming in and helping the city. And plus, great management by you guys has kept you under budget on the expense side, and we appreciate that as well. Uh, I'm not going to, I, I thought for a while, I give two presentations today, that's the hat, I always give presentations in my cowboy hats, but, uh, uh, I, so I was going to give part of those, but instead I decided to start, since it's January, start off on a bigger scale with Texas and make sure that you and the citizens know some of the facts about Texas, and then I'll segue into what we're doing. First of all, uh, Texas is the ninth largest economy in the world. Uh, so if you think about that, it's, it's been even higher on that list. Of course, countries have gotten bigger and combined and so forth. So it's the ninth largest economy in the world. Uh, the number one U.S. exporter for 19 years in a row at $276 billion this last year. There are 14 million people in the Texas civilian labor force. Graduation rate, we had our kids in here earlier, one of which was mine, so uh, that was cool. And like a normal kid, he didn't give me the time of day. Uh, but, but that's okay. He's, uh, he you blame him, right? We, we noticed it. it no, we're hat. very proud of him and all the other ones. Most of them spend the night in our house throughout the course of the year. 90% uh, graduation rate in the state of Texas. It's uh, among the top five in the highest in the nation, which is important because we're graduating kids that are going out in our workforce, which is something that we'll also address this year. It's the leading destination for companies relocating from other states. We have 27 commercial airports, 11 interstate highways, 46 freight railroads, 16 seaports, 32 foreign trade zones, 624 miles of coastland. One of the great things, of course, is no personal or corporate income tax. And it's the largest energy producing state in the nation, the number one job creator in the nation from 2010 through 2020, just under 2 million jobs created net. And we are home to 49 Fortune 500 company headquarters, not just companies, but headquarters. And lastly, we led the nation in high-tech exports for the eighth consecutive year at $44.8 billion. What we're seeing, though, is that Texas is not just known here with all of us. That's okay. Uh, I thought somebody was congratulating us. Um, the, it is also known across the nation. And what's cool about that, and something to think about, is that's what we're, how we're approaching Stephenville. 
Stephenville is not just to be known for us here in this room and around our town. It's to be known across the nation and across the world. So our strategy this year has changed somewhat. It's actually just elevated to be in a position marketing-wise and everything else to be known across the, uh, the entire nation. We're getting a lot of help from Tarleton. I got a, uh, in two occasions in the last little bit, uh, people have been calling me. I, I've told you once before that I had someone from North Carolina, one of our developers, call me one day during football season and tell me that uh, he was watching us play McNeese State, I believe it was, on a Saturday on television. That was pretty cool. Just a few weeks ago, I was with another developer out of Dallas. He said, guess what? I was flipping through, saw us playing Gonzaga on TV in basketball. Tarleton has a big deal here because every time Tarleton's mentioned, of course, Stephenville's mentioned. And what does that do for us? It starts to give us a reason to want to have something great here each and every day. So we're doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. We're reaching out and saying, how can we be the big guns across the state of Texas? Whenever we read these great little facts and everything here, we need to also be thinking about what are those facts for Stephenville and how are those going to show not just how it has it's been, but how it's going to be each and every month from here forward. So for my reports from here forward are going to show you how we're doing that, and they're also going to show you how it's making an impact across and beyond the borders of our four walls of Stephenville. So I uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the work you're doing. Look forward to working with you in 2022. I wonder if Johnny ever sang that as Storms in Hamilton before he recorded it. Who knows? Thank you, sir. Anybody got any questions for Jeff? Okay, next item is consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? Mayor, so moved. Approve your consent agenda. Motion is second. Proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Consent agenda is accepted. <coughs> Comments by city manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, you uh, have a council work session on Thursday, January the 13th. Uh, we have committee meetings on the 18th of January. And the filing period for a place on the May 7th ballot is uh, January 19 through February 18th. So, there you have it. Ms. Durfee. Well, Pastor Ed already left. <coughs> um, he brought up that we lost a great man from this community, Mr. Gilbert. He, uh, I was actually, i show my age here, I was the first sixth grade class to be at Gilbert Intermediate. So his wife was my teacher. He, you know, they're just a huge part of this community, along with Mr. Gandy, who we unfortunately lost over the holiday break also and you know there's those of us that have been here for years and years and those leaders are the ones that I think I myself strive to try to live up to those footsteps that they have done and be a part of the growth of this town and make their make people like that proud so hope everybody had a wonderful holiday and it was a great state game loved that loved having them here tonight and that's it congratulations jackets yes. uh, just uh, congratulations to uh, to all of the participants in the Erath County Junior Livestock Show sale our, our uh, show going on right now and then the sale Saturday so if you get a chance to go out and support those kids please do so Darren Congratulations to the Stephenville Yellow Jackets and their state championship. It was great to have them here tonight. See Coach Doty and all his other coaches. And uh, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. They came out to speak for or get something. That's an important part of the process. We appreciate you coming out. Ready? No comment. Ready. That's it. Congratulations to the Jackets and uh, Happy New Year. And uh, buckle up for 2022 because we just added another project with the Senior Center this year. And there's a lot of big things happening in Stephenville. So. It's going to be a great year. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say congratulations also. I said it's a sterling in the team, and I'll say it again. It, it's it's really enjoyable to watch a team like that. Uh, and it's, it's gratifying to have a number of citizens come to the council. I wish we could have positive input in, in on, on as many different issues as we deal with and I don't consider this to be negative input but generally if it's in my neighborhood I take a greater interest in it. I'd like to see people take a greater interest in things that are going on citywide and, and participate more and, and take more of a role and play more of a role in the decisions that are made. 
we represent y'all and we try to make decisions to do that as well as we can but sometimes because we don't hear from you we don't know what you want or maybe don't want or what you would prefer uh, and, and having the input is a positive thing for us and, and you don't have to come to the meeting all of us have phones we all receive emails we you know there's many ways to communicate uh, there's a lot of people communicate with me at church or at the grocery store or the restaurant and you'd be surprised at the things I hear at Jake and Dorothy's but that's neither here nor there <laughs> but thank you for coming thank you for participating and, and I look forward to continuing to, to help the city grow and, and seeing the positive things happen that we are having right now Gerald <clears throat> Uh, I, what else can we say? I mean, congratulations to the Jackets. It was wonderful going over to AT&T Stadium and, uh, and uh, watching them play. But what was more um, than the win, I think, and the win was, was, was wonderful to see, is to see maybe 10, 15,000 fans from here supporting kids. That's pretty neat. I mean, gosh, that was a huge crowd. It was, uh, that was nice to see that. So congratulations to them. Uh, it took a very short period here today uh, for this council to take a major step, and that's to build a new senior center. Uh, that has, the existing senior center, by the way, has been around now for <clears throat> 60, some odd, 60 some odd years, you know. It was a lady here by the name of Lucille McCleskey that was the spearhead behind the senior center. And uh, uh, her husband was the president of uh, Farmers First National Bank for a long time. And uh, she, uh, she kind of started the senior center. And it has been the same and hasn't been changed much in the last 60 years, as a matter of fact. Uh, it, a little maintenance here and there. It needed to be replaced. We all knew that. This council presented it to the voters a year ago, and the voters turned that down as part of the overall package. We were able, because the economy has been good, and collections, tax collections have been good, we were able to save money and to set that money aside because we knew that that needed to be done. And we took that step to do that tonight. And that's a very positive thing. It's a good thing for this community. <clears throat> and I hope we can follow up on all of those things in the future. And I'll say what I've said before. If you like 2021 as far as how this community is doing and what has been accomplished, you're going to love 2022 <laughs> and beyond because there are some really good things that are going to come about. So with that, thank you, sir. Uh, congrats to the Yellow Jackets. It's kind of cool to see guys that you went to school with come back and uh, be coaches and win state championships. Some of them even younger than me. So, uh, it's really, really pretty cool to see um, friends come back and make a difference in their community and, and uh, win the ultimate prize for, for a lot of those guys. He's, he's winning championships, but Sterling and, and his coaches are, are making a lot of great men, which is, which is a lot more important at, in the end game. So uh, congratulations to those guys. Those guys. Um, you know, a new senior center, I think, should be on the front page of the newspaper tomorrow. Um, we didn't increase your taxes to do it. We utilized sales tax money and revenue that we've been put aside to pay for it with cash. We're utilizing that money to make your life better. And to me, that's what, that's what our role is to do. And so I commend everybody up here that came up with this idea, that worked this idea, uh, worked it through the, the senior advisory board and, and their, their work on it. And uh, um, it's pretty cool. It's, gonna, it's going to give gives uh, the seniors that have needed a new place um, something really special and really neat um, and it's going to allow for a part of town that has a, a building that is out, 
outdated and, and to be changed and to be something vibrant within our downtown community. So uh, I'm excited to see what happens there. Um, and the last thing I say at every meeting, it's be involved. It's really good. I love when the council chamber is full. Um, because you're involved in your, your government, you're involved in communities. Mr. Nick says, unfortunately, that doesn't happen very often. Um, but as, as uh, uh, the city manager said, uh, there is a filing period if you want to sit up here. It starts in a couple of weeks and, 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 and your voice can, can be heard and you can be a part of those up here making decisions for the community. So. Um, it's a good good time to be a, a Stephenville Yellow Jacket and a honeybee, and uh, that's it. In 1841, Louis Braille said, we must be treated as equals, and communication is the way that we can come about this, bring this about. And I just want to mention that on January 4th, today is the World Braille Day, and there are a lot of people in the world who that's how they communicate. And I'll just give you one little idea. The Webster's Unabridged Dictionary, if in Braille, is 72 volumes in size. That's mm. how much more difficult it is for the, the visually impaired to be able to read. So we have several folks in this community, and my father is, uh, has lost his sight, all but lost it. And it's, uh, I, can, I can tell you I'm a little more sensitive to it. I'm going to encourage everybody to reach out and help somebody who's visually impaired tomorrow. With that, any other comments? It is 646 and the city council meeting will stand adjourned.